Networking is extremely valuable. And of course, I can tell you a few stories, but I could also just point to the phrase social capital, right? Like social capital means what is your net worth as far as your network? And many people have even probably said something clever to the effects of like your net worth is equivalent to your network. And what that means is, is that the more people that you know and that you connect with then and the more value that you bring, right? And the bigger your network, the more opportunities and the more people that you have to support you, to cheer you on, to help you, to be somebody that you can help and to make connections for you. Now, as far as like the stories of why it's so important, especially as an as an instructional designer, the one I'm thinking about right now is um, is Maya, and Maya landed a job at Apple, and one of the things that she told me that really stood out about her journey, like her success story, is that she was a teacher. She had never been in corporate. But she knew that she wanted to be an instructional designer at one of the big tech firms in California. And so her, um, her way of doing that was to have um, informal interviews, right? And all that means is, is connecting with people that you know that probably already work either in the field of instructional design or they work in corporate and maybe they work with instructional designers or they interface with them or they have or they at least know what they do. Right. And so what Maya did is she just had um, coffee chats with people that she'd already known. She let everybody know that she's looking for instructional design work. And then she messaged people individually and said, hey, I am looking to transition out of teaching into corporate as an instructional designer. Can I buy you coffee and pick your brain and have a chat and catch up. And, and so what she did is she showed up, she came prepared with a list of questions, right? And she also um, was there on time, bought their coffee. And then she was able to get a lot of information and of course bond with that other person. And so the reason why that's so valuable is because one, she was able to show up confident to her interviews because she'd actually talk to people that were in the corporate space. And so when they asked her about business process or how things work or whatever, she wasn't left alone in the dark or just you know, bombarded, bombarded by the information you can pull from Google, right? Because Google doesn't you know, tell you exactly what it's like to be in a corporate setting. You can't ask it those kinds of targeted questions that you might have if you're a Maya. And so, um, and it was through all these different informal interviews and these connections that she made to people that worked at the various um, tech companies that she was notified about the job at Apple and had some connections there and was able to show up and talk about the business and, and feel confident in her answers because of all of the networking that she had done. It's easy to get quantity, right? You can um, run a little spam bot on LinkedIn and auto auto connect with a hundred people a week if you wanted to, but that doesn't get you anywhere as far as the true value of networking. And the true value of networking is to be top of mind for people that might have opportunities that would be a right fit for you and where you are in your journey to become an instructional designer, right? So if you just have a bunch of connections, but you're not top of mind, they've never met you. They all, they only know who you are. Maybe they happen to see a post of yours. That's not going to be enough to, for them to recommend you for a job or to introduce you to somebody else. And so I would encourage you to do to target a couple ways. First of all, expand your current reach, right? So if you've never been on LinkedIn before, for example, right? That's like the number one place that people do networking for, um, for their careers. So if you've never been on LinkedIn before, the first thing you want to do is you want to connect with people you actually know in real life and people that you've already met, right? And so those would be your first 
level of quality connections. And then you can start reaching out to those people, tell them what your mission is and ask them if they can connect you with other people that are either instructional designers, um, would be interested in doing some kind of informal interviews with you, um, or just good people to connect with. And also just another little tip about this, even just finding people that have lots of connections themselves on LinkedIn are really good people to connect with. Because if you connect with somebody that has, you know, 10,000 connections, that's more valuable in that platform specifically than somebody who just has five, because then now you become second connections to another 10,000 people. And so um, that's just another measurement of the quality of your connections. And there's other ways to do it too. Um, you know, as the, you know, COVID guidelines lessen up a little bit, there are in-person ways to network and to really get some kind of face-to-face, -face, you know, go to your local um, association, like training association meetings, whatever that looks like for where you are in the U.S., like the biggest one, I would think of ATD, the Association of Talent Development. So one where they have chapters all over the United States, but I'm sure there's other meetup groups that you could go and network in person. And that's really going to be the highest quality of your network. And then, um, like I said, have people introduce you to other people. That's another layer. And then follow up with those people that they introduce you to. Um, I remember when I was thinking about first starting my business and the most valuable conversation I had was because one of the people that I knew said, oh, I know somebody who started a consulting business. He'd be great to talk to. And I followed up with him and I got on a phone call with him. And that conversation um, changed a lot about how I understood business and how to set it up and whatever. And so there really is so much value um, in creating a quality network. And, there's, and, and remember, a network is not always just a take, 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 right? But it's gotta be reciprocal in some way. Um, so you could volunteer for people, you can share value in your posts, um, you can um, talk about what you're learning as you go through things, you can demonstrate your skills, um, you can comment on other people's things and be helpful if there's any way that you can answer questions or even um, in some of those online networking spaces, Asking good questions to those that post is valuable for those original posters. And, and it makes you stand out, right? Because then they have something to go and they have something to respond to. And the other thing that I want to just mention about reaching out to people um, when you want to make those connections is a lot of people are busy. And it's, you know, and so as far as getting coffee dates, it's a lot easier to get something like that and those informal interviews if you have been introduced by someone else. Otherwise, it, um, it becomes a lot easier to just ask one or two small targeted questions to somebody you don't know to kind of start a conversation. And then maybe um, you guys can lead up to meeting up online or something like that. And, um, and you know, make sure to pay it forward, right? So whenever, you know, people reach out to you to try to meet up with to you or whenever you're in a place where you can help make sure that you do so as well, because that'll just keep feeding that whole networking loop for you, which will serve you whether throughout your entire career, your ne network will serve you, um, you know, if you want to do anything, if you want to start a nonprofit, if you want to start a business, if you want to advance your career, um, if you want to start a movement. If you just need support and the job that you're doing, people is where it's at. And that's really what networking is all about. It's just growing, you know, your, your people. And I don't know about you, but I love people. And so growing a network is um, something that is just, I, I'd, I'd be so lost without it. I think the biggest thing that you want to avoid is to be a me, 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 a take, take, take kind of person. And so if there's any way that you can add or share value to this other person, and sometimes that word seems fuzzy, but what it means is like, 
how can you help that other person that you're looking to benefit from? How can you um, make your questions short enough where they can answer quickly if you're like messaging somebody on LinkedIn? If you're going to, if somebody's going to take the time out to do an informal interview with you and go have coffee, you know, buy their coffee and also bring something to them. Like also offer to share your connections that you might have in whatever space, or um, it might even just be a hobby that you can share insights about humor, um, something that you can share to brighten their day, articles about something that you they might find interesting, or whenever you talk to somebody and you meet with them or you find out more about what they like or what they're interested in or what they're working on, even just being a connector yourself. Like, hey, I saw that you were interested in, I don't know, uh, gamification of learning. Well, I found this other person over here. You, you, you two should meet. And that's what I mean about trying to find ways to bring that other person value. Now, the other thing that I want to tell you is um, don't just ask a stranger that you don't know to get on a phone call with you right away. It's always better to start a conversation, start with those small, easy to answer questions and, and show them after they've answered your, your questions that you've taken their advice and you implemented it. Uh, I know that people love to give advice and they love it even more when they see that advice has been implemented and then you come back and share. And so doing more of that, right? Like continuing to follow up with that person. Don't just take their advice and run away and then ghost them. Come back and say, oh, your advice is so helpful. I use it to apply it to my portfolio here. Check it out, send them a link because when people are responding to you, they, they're rooting for you right? They want to be helpful. And so if they can find out that something that they did for you really did help you and you really did implement it, they'll want to help you more. Um, and so that's the other thing. And then the other parts about don't is if you're going to reach out to people during your job hunt, don't reach out to them to start asking for jobs. Instead, you could reach out to them and talk about um, what ask some questions about, oh, what's it like to work at Google as an instructional designer? Um, I mean, make it a little more, a little smaller of a question than that, right? It's something like, um, what's your favorite part of working at Google as an instructional designer? Or what's your favorite project you've ever worked on? Something that's easy and where a person gets to talk about themselves. Those are kind of the things that you want to start conversations. You don't want to be like, hey, I'm looking for a job and here's my portfolio, right? Um, that's, um, that just, those are the kinds of things that just kind of get ignored in an inbox. But if you can uh, look at things where, look at a person's profile, see if you have any common interests or something that you admire or something that you can say that's positive about their, their profile, the work they've done, how impressed you are with them, um, Whatever it is, um, do that. And then the other thing that I notice that is probably a don't is if you reach out to somebody um, that, you know, does a lot of social media or they already have a lot of content or whatever, um, don't just ask them you know, the same question that they've already created, you know, blog posts about or whatever. Like for instance, like Christy Tucker, right? Christy Tucker is known for scenario designs. You don't want to message Christy Tucker and say like, how do you build a, a scenario for e-learning? Like, come on. She's already answered that question a hundred times on her blog. Instead, a better way is to say, oh, Christy, I read your blog on scenario designs and I specifically read this part and I was interested in whatever and I have a question about this specific piece. And I know some people will even, if you ask them questions um, in those uh, networking platforms like LinkedIn and you ask them a question that's, that's kind of broad, they will say something like, 
um, go read this book and then come back to me and, uh, and I will, you know, get on a phone call or talk to you about it or whatever, right? That is for real. The, um, those people are probably testing you, right? To see if you can go and find your own answers and come and ask them targeted questions that doesn't waste their time. Um, I actually know that I have been, uh, I've done a few things like that, right? Where somebody just asked me a broad question. I send them resources and I say, if you, when you read this, come back to me, give me a summary, and then I'll get on a phone call with you. And you know what happens? Nobody ever, nobody ever um, comes back with the summary or has targeted questions. And so they don't get a phone call. But if you could be that person that and that takes the advice and go reads a book and then comes back to the person that you um, initiated that conversation with, then you would stand out to that person. You can make a really good connection that way. And so, um, and then as far as don't sun in person, I think, you know, circle the room, right? Don't, don't just hang out in a corner just because you show up to a network event does not mean you're networking. Um, until you actually go and talk to people. And so don't um, get all inside your head. Don't um, think that they're going to think you're stupid or any of those other kinds of things. Um, know that everybody's been in a place where you are right now, where they're trying to grow their network and they're trying to grow um, people that they're connected to. And people are very forgiving and, and loving and understanding about where you are. And so just don't be self-conscious. Put yourself out there as much as you can. Um, and even if you're an introvert, you know, find ways to do it, find ways to connect, even if it's, you know, in a webinar or um, going to conferences like on online or whatever it is that works for you. Put yourself out there and, and know that um, people really do want to find ways um, to be helpful to you.